Happy Monday afternoon, everybody. Mr. Stitches is just pouring himself a cup of tea. I have just poured mine. We're going to get going here in a moment. Okay, get myself situated here. All right. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Just, uh, <laughs> just gonna shake the tea bag around here a little bit. <laughs> I'll be, be just a quick sip. Oh, that's good. Ooh, it's hot. All right. Okay, Mr. and Stitches, as soon as you are got yourself together, you can take us to the craft table. A big hello to everybody, and uh, welcome to a Monday afternoon. It is quite a busy week here at the uh, Jaden and Stitches show. We are going to do a big, beautiful basket crochet along this week. And of course, this Friday is Fair Isle Style Calendar Blanket Day. It'll be the May installment, the 5th. Fair Isle style addition to the blanket. It's, uh, I, I mean, five months already. I don't know. I, I feel like on some days the time doesn't move very quickly. And then on others, it just seems to be flying by. Anyway, on to today's project. Welcome, welcome, everyone. The Big Beautiful Basket is a very popular uh, tutorial here on our channel. We will link the original tutorial down below. So if you want to skip over to that at some point and just get a refresher, you can do that. But we're going to build one all together today and um, probably over a couple of live streams because there's no way I can make one whole big beautiful basket in a single sitting. Uh, at least not not if unless it was four hours long. <laughs> and I don't think I've got it in me to do that today. Um, but we also wanted to pick yarns explain the whole concept behind picking the yarns, talk about best practices for a stiff basket. I know a lot of you have made the basket and you know you talk about how it wants to sort of flop over or um, be sort of sloppy. So we're going to talk about best yarn choices and best hook choices and tension. Those are your three major things that really affect how stiff that basket comes out. So here we go. I have got in front of me a whole bunch of yarn from my please use this up stash. I am not particularly excited by any one of these on their own, but because when we made the, the big beautiful baskets in the past, we've mixed together three completely bizarro um, uh, variegated yarns. We've made, I made a little uh, baby beautiful basket mixing together just plain yarns. I made a rectangular basket mixing together three just single colored yarns and every single time it works out. So I'm really gonna test that theory this week and I'm gonna pick some of the most blandest, most boring colors I can possibly find from my stash. This is why it's in the Please Use Me Up stash and we're gonna see how it looks. Um, I might even end up kind of cutting and tying in other stuff as I go. This is gonna be a real scrap basket. So first and foremost, most of this is acrylic. Uh, this is wool, and normally I don't recommend, I think this is wool too, I don't usually recommend about uh, mixing together your fibers, but in a case like this basket, I'm probably only going to toss it in the washing machine on a very gentle cycle, cold water, once in a while, because it's going to be holding yarn in my 
uh, craft room and it shouldn't get dirty very often. So uh, a couple of, a couple of, if I remember to wash it gently in cool water because there's, there's um, wool in it, I shouldn't have any problems with it shrinking or acting strange. So keep that in mind if you're mixing fibers. Secondly, I highly recommend sticking to yarns if you can that are kind of stiff. Um, the yarns I used in the previous Big Beautiful Basket were all Red Heart Comfort variegated yarns. And Red Heart Comfort is a 100% acrylic yarn, but they're, they're variegated um, balls, which are really, really big. Um, typically very, like they're, they're about as thin as their Red Heart Super Saver. So they're not as thick as the other solid colored comfort yarns are. So they're a little bit thinner, but they're very stiff. Like they're not, it's not soft yarn. I, it's not the kind of yarn I would want to make clothing out of. It's, um, or even really blankets. It's got kind of a, a rough, stiff texture, but that yarn does make excellent baskets. So if you've got stiff, not so nice feeling yarn in your stash, this is a great project for that. That said, I've also got some satiny yarns here that are very sort of soft and slippery. I've got some loosely wound uh, yarn here that is is also kind of like not very strong. I've got some size three lightweight DK yarns that are baby yarns here, lightweight baby yarns or baby sport size. Um, so, and they're nice and soft. And uh, there's another satiny yarn. I've also got some strange, very thin, but kind of fluffy spun yarn. I've got all kinds. This is a size five. And I'm just going to mash them all together. Depending on how thin the yarns feel, I might end up carrying four strands together as opposed to just three. If it's really, really thick for a while, I might forego one strand and only go with two. So I'm really gonna feel my way through this blanket, or I should say through this basket, much the way I did the scrap gan blanket we did several years ago. So if you want to make a big, beautiful basket and you want to use up whatever the heck you've got in your stash, hopefully we'll be able to show you over the course of this crochet along exactly how you can do that, not really worrying about fiber, yarn weight, or anything. The next thing I want to talk about is hook sizes. So I've got three here. In the original basket tutorial, I used a 10 millimeter hook, a big one, because of the three um, yarn strands I was holding together worked uh, well with a 10 millimeter for me. So you want to have a tight, as tight a tension as you can when you're wrangling multiple strands together, it can become uh, a little bit more of a challenge and I will be definitely challenging myself this week with all these yarns. So um, I'm going to do a quick sample to see if I like the size of my hook with the yarns I've chosen. Otherwise, I've got a nine millimeter and an eight millimeter. So they're all one size apart, a full size apart, as opposed to being half sizes. I've got an L11. So the eight is also known as an L11. The, the 10 is, I think, an N. And um, the nine is an M, um, if you're using the US sizing. Either way, these are my larger hooks. It doesn't really matter which hook you go for. What you want is a tight stitch um, that feels stiff. So the, the fabric doesn't really want to bend. So unlike you know, if we're doing something lacy and loose or a blanket where you want that kind of bend in a basket, you don't. So I'm going to be using one of these three. I'm not sure which one yet. Um, I might even go with the, might start with the middle one, but we'll see. I've got a pair of scissors and a yarn needle and that is all I need. So right off the bat, I have been looking at these two yarns in my stash for a long time. I had a whole lot of this particular green. I've used it up. We made an entire baby blanket um, out of it. And I just I had so much of it and I'm just so sick of looking at it on its own. It's a it's a pretty soft, satiny sage green. But I, I had like six skeins of it back in the day, maybe even more. And I'm just I'm just sick of it. So I want to use it up. This is a very palish yellow. Um, it's a red heart super saver. So it's a kind of a not overly soft, but not terribly scratchy um, size for acrylic. It's also a color I don't particularly like so I'm thinking I'm going to use these two to start and then I've got all these other ones I've got this soft kind of skinny fluffy peach I've got this one that almost made it into the um, mitered granny square blanket we just finished with um, because it's kind of a, a plum color it's also sort of fluffy and skinny 
Um, I have some wool. This is sort of a lilac color. Like I said, on their own, none of these are none of these are bad. Like those three together, not too bad, not too bad. Um, I've got these, which are kind of a nice couple of beiges, a light beige and a darker beige. Those are nice neutrals. They're sort of a shimmery satin, really not um, not bad on their own either. Um, this orange just feels like it's really out of place because it's just so bright, but a little bit of a shock of color winding its way through the basket might not actually look that bad once you're doing all the stitches together. So I think I might work some of that in. This is the only one that I'm really not sure about. This is, I also had a whole lot of this. I made myself a, um, like a, a poncho tunic hoodie thing eons ago. I don't even have it anymore. I gave it away. Uh, really, really soft, really nice feeling yarn, but um, it's, it's just, I mean, I'm done with looking at those colors. They're kind of pink, orange, and brown, and yellow. Very 70s kind of feel. I, I loved it at the time, but I'm kind of done with it now. I'm not actually sure if I'm going to put this in the, the basket or not, but we shall see. And the rest of it, we're just going to see what I managed to, to go in at a time. So I'm going to pull everything back. I'm definitely starting with these two. I need to start with at least three strands because the big, beautiful basket uses three strands held together. Because these two are very similar in color, and they're both pretty light, I'm thinking I might want to sort of put something darker in with it this is, and maybe a little thicker to start like this red. Um, but I would like everybody's opinion. So rather than running a poll, I just want you to start typing into the chat. What do you think? Should I maybe even not start with either of these? Like, should I start like these are all my light colors. I guess I'll put my light colors together. So I've got a peach. I've got the two beiges, which I would consider light. That's more of a dark. This multicolored girl, like sort of pinky yellow baby yarn. I'll just pull this down here so you can see it. That's all pretty light. That's light. It's basically, basically a baby blue and a white. So I put those together. They're all pretty light. That's pretty light too, that bright orange. So maybe I'll put that in this pile. And that's dark. I think I will consider the oatmeal dark. This bluish one is dark. That's dark. This one is definitely dark. There's a uh, beiges and some darker blues in that. And these two guys could kind of go either way. They could, could kind of go to the light. They could kind of go to the dark. So, you know what? I might, maybe I'll treat the bright orange as one of the dark ones. All right. So there, there is my split. I've got my light yarns over here. I've got my dark yarns over there. I definitely want to have at least one light and one dark running together at all times. And, um, oh, use your least favorite at the bottom as you won't see it. Caroline, that's a really good suggestion. Oh, let me think. Let me think. Hi, everybody who's just joining us. I'm just getting going here with the big, beautiful basket. Calaria likes the yellow, the green, and the bright orange together. The thick red one would be good for the bottom, says Shell. Dark is first. A basket will sit on the bottom, says Maureen. I agree. Uh, you don't want it dirty, says Maureen. Well, I have to say this one's going to do business in um, the craft room, which doesn't luckily get too dirty. But you're right. If I didn't really, I should probably use the yarns I care the least about on the bottom. Um, the red is thicker. Yes, we start with the base, Jody. Burgundy or the dark red. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to lean to this too. It's kind of a nice color. Um, Charlie's got, got a mess of yarn. Okay. <laughs> Put the dark on the bottom, dark on the bottom, dark on the bottom. Okay, I, I'm going to agree, guys. I think we should start with the dark on the bottom. So um, here's the thing. I kind of like this color. Um, so I think I might, I know this sounds completely counter to everything we just said, but I might save it for just starting to work up the side just because I kind of, as I'm sitting here holding it, I'm going, I think I kind of want to look at this color in the basket. So let's start with this. I don't like it anymore. I will use it. I'll start it on the bottom. It's very thin though, even though it was considered a size five, it's kind of thin, but I'm going to mix it with, let's see here. Let's find my my middle, there's my middle. So that's one. And I'm going to mix it with, oh, let me see, one of these boring beiges. I think I'll go with this one because it's sort of skinny and satiny. So I'm going to put those to the side. I'm going to start with this fluffy, whatever this is, plum. 
Like I said, I almost used it in the blanket. I really am eager to use it up. So let's find the correct end for that. So I've got three strands here and already I can tell it is just not going to be thick enough. So I'm going to work in a fourth strand. So right away, I'm going to go with uh, four strands to start, which feels a little crazy, but I think that's what we're going to have to do. So I've got a beige, this brown, a bit of a plum color going. Already that's not bad. You see what I mean? You can mix together all these colors that don't make sense. So that almost looks like a Neapolitan ice cream. Now I know it changes, the brown part changes to yellow and then pink and, and orange. Uh, but I, somehow I don't think that's going to look too bad. So here we go. Um, I think I'm also going to mix in something for strength. Will it be this yellow? I think this yellow might get used all the way through because that's going to be bright. Oh, I feel it's ugly. So let's let's put it to the test. I'm going to start with the yellow. The yellow, the darker beige, the plum, and that ball of multicolored stuff that I'm really sick of looking at. So here we go. Let me clear the clear the stage so that everything else is not kind of confusing us. And I will just put it all off to the side so that if I want to start working in other colors as I go, I can. All right. So the next thing we want to do is test out our hooks to make sure I've got a hook that is a good size. I really do like this rich red. So I'm going to make sure that goes into the basket as we curl up the top. So I'm going to put that to the side over here. Okay, here we go. We've got big, medium, small. So eight millimeter, nine millimeter, 10 millimeter. This is the one I used, or this is the size of hook I used in the original tutorial. I have made successive big, beautiful baskets using the nine and the eight millimeters respectively, just depending on the yarn I've got. This feels nice and thick, these four strands together. So I'm going to make a slip knot. I'm going to start with the 10 because this is pretty thick. And I'm going to make a few, just going to make a little sampler. So I'm going to just chain, what, five, six, something like that. See, it's already changing. Well, this isn't going to be too ugly. How about that? And we'll do a little bit of single crochet back over top of it. When you are wrangling multiple strands together at the same time, um, you are going to challenge your dexterity. If you've got a mobile, like if you've got issues kind of with like your tendons or with, you know, maybe you've got uh, other pain issues or inflammation like me, um, remember to chill, take your time. Don't pressure yourself. Keep a little pad of paper and a pen handy so you can make notes about what row you're on, what stitch you're on. Use a stitch marker to mark where you are if the, you find that helps. Um, you don't have to do it all in one sitting. So that is not a bad... doesn't feel tight, though. So that's how it feels with the 10. Um, I feel like it's a little bit squishy. I don't want to have to try and keep my tension tight. I want the hook to do most of the work for me. So I'm going to go down one hook size to nine. I said I was going to start with a nine. I probably just should have. Always trust your crochet instincts, guys. <laughs> okay, that feels a little tighter. So let me let me try working a few single crochets with that. Yeah, see the nine already has made quite a difference, which I'm surprised by. I don't feel like I have to try to keep my tension tight just to get a nice stiff. Yeah, right there. I can already see. See when I pull it apart, there really aren't as many spaces. It feels kind of on the tighter side. I didn't have to keep my tension really, really tight. But just for curiosity's sake, I'm also going to try the same thing using the eight millimeter. And then I will know whether or not. So already I can tell that the, the 10 millimeter is out. Now the, the eight might just be a bit too small, but here we go. I'm gonna chain six. Um, okay, that's the first time I ran ran out of actual hook space. So that's something to keep in mind. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I definitely don't have to work too hard to keep my tension tight, but this already feels a little more difficult than it should. So I think the nine millimeter. My trusty nine millimeter 
I think that will be the hook for this project. Oh, yeah. Tight, um, but it was a little more difficult. I'm not looking for difficult. I'm going to go with the nine millimeter. So there you go. That is how I chose which hook to go with for this project. The nine millimeter it is. I'm going to have a sip of my tea. You want to shout out? We had a few people gift some members. Oh, we had some membership gifting. Thank you, everybody. Mr. and Stitches is in the well. He's keeping an eye on the chat. I'm a little, I, my eyes are kind of focused here today, so I haven't actually been able to look at the chat, but thank you so much. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh my gosh, that's a nice cup of tea. Oh, don't you just love a hot cup of tea in the afternoon? It's a very rainy day here today. So it's uh, lovely to have a nice hot cup of tea and some crafty company. And that rhymes because of course it does. All right, so I'm beginning the basket now. We start in the very center, the very bottom of the basket. I'm going to make a cinch circle with all four strands held together I'm treating all four strands held together as a single strand. And uh, I am not going to crochet really, really fast today because I want to try and focus more on a good tension than speeding along through the project. So here we go. I want to work eight single crochets into that cinch circle over top of my short tail. So I can cinch it shut. Now all of my little tails, despite my best efforts, did not all start at the same length. So I've got to keep my eye on that. But once I get through this, that won't be a problem anymore. That's four. That's five. I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit more. There we go. Six, seven, and eight. Really taking my time here, making sure that I get nice tight stitches, especially for that bottom. There's my tails. I'm going to grab them and pull them tight. And my center will not have a hole in it. Lovely. I'm going to work over top of those tails. So my first row will be even more kind of like me taking my time. I've got eight stitches all the way around. I'm going to work two to, two single crochet into each of those eight stitches. I'm not joining my rows. We are working in a continuous round. So if you're the type that feels it's helpful to use a stitch marker to mark the first and last stitch of your row, this is where you would use it. So my first stitch for row two is worked into the first stitch of what was row one. Oh, that's tight. Here we go. I'm going to make a single crochet, get a little slack on my yarn, and make a second one in the same place, and all the other stitches will be a little looser. Okay, nice and stiff. Now, that first stitch that I made here in row two, that's just one back from my hook because I've made two single crochet into the same stitch. This would be the stitch that you mark, that first stitch you made. That was the first stitch of row two. So for example, I will grab one of my little stitch markers. Come here, you. I'll just mark that stitch. So you can see when I get back around to it, I know that was the first stitch of the row. And if I lose count, because I'm chit-chatting with everybody, um, I won't have to keep backing up and trying to figure out where I am. Two single crochet into each stitch all the way around with the stitch marker, it makes it so much easier to kind of turn your brain off. And here we go. Vima, hi Vima. Thank you so much for being here. Oops. Okay, that's two. I'm working over top of my short tails, so I'm kind of being extra, extra careful here. Here's the next two stitches coming. I promise this gets easier <laughs> once you get a few rows out from the, the center. Plus, you know, you kind of get used to managing those four sort of balls of yarn. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the first six stitches of the row done. That pretty much finishes working over top of my short tails. So I feel like I can pick up the pace just a smidgen. 
is the next two. If while you're working, you drop a strand of yarn or you only end up using it for half a stitch, don't fret, just pick it up and keep using it as you go. It's not like anything's gonna unravel on you. So don't worry about that. Going for tightness. Um, already, already those four balls of completely random, not matching colors is already making something that I kind of like the look of. It's taken that that pale yellow that I really don't like and almost changed it. It almost now looks a bit like straw or a little more golden somehow. That's so interesting how that happens. And that variegated ball of yarn I was sick and tired of looking at, or the self-striping yarn, I guess, um, is already starting to look nicer with all of its little, its little yarn mates in this basket. So I'm coming up on the first stitch of the row. That was the first stitch of the row. So I know I have one more stitch left to work two single crochet into. So I'll let my stitch marker fall so it's out of the way. And that is the end of row two. So I started with eight stitches in row one. I worked two single crochet into each stitch all the way around for row two. So I'm up to 16 stitches. For row three, I work two single crochet into the next stitch one single crochet into the stitch after that. Two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way around. Eight times three is 24. So at the end of row three, I'll have 24 stitches. So I'm gonna start with two single crochet in the first stitch of what was row two. I can put my stitch marker back on that first stitch I made. That tells me that's the first stitch. One, single crochet into the next stitch. There we go. Two, one, and then I start again. Two single crochet into the next stitch. And one single crochet into the stitch after that. And this is definitely a challenge. It's a challenge to keep all those strands of yarn wrangled. Um, you might feel when you're doing this that you've got to kind of change the position, um, change how you um, hold your yarn or feed your yarn. And you can do that. You can also do things like, you know, get a, you know, get a loop up on your hook and then tug back on everything. Finish the, the crochet and then tug back on everything. Um, you can sort of change up your style a little bit even if it does add a little bit of time to the project, um, it will give you the overall sort of tension and effect that you want. So don't be afraid to play with your methods. That's two and then one. Two into the next stitch. And then one. Yep. And I'm just going to keep all of my yarn kind of under control to the side. I'm going to try and finish a set of, of repeats. So two single crochet into the next stitch. And then one single crochet into the stitch after that. I'm going to try and finish a set of increases before, for example, I yank on my yarn or try to sort of just smooth out the tails. That just helps me go like, oh, did I finish the set? Yes, I finished the set. So I'm gonna finish each set before I fiddle with my yarn. That's just another thing I kind of try and tell myself to, to keep it all under control. Oops, I don't know what happened there, but let me try that again. And that's one, okay. And then I have one more set left. Two single crochet into the next stitch, one single crochet into the stitch after that, and that brings me back up to my marked stitch, which I know is the first stitch in the row, which was row three. So we're on row three, just about to finish it. Already three rows in. And one into the last stitch. Okay, so I'm back at the beginning. I'm going to flatten it down. I'm going to grab my measuring tape. And let's see where I'm at. So at the end of row three, is that not pretty? This looks 
Beautiful. <laughs> How about that? Four balls of yarn that don't make any sense together. I really don't like on their own anymore. And already I feel like, I feel like this is so pretty. This boggles my mind every time I do it. I try to mix together the worst yarns and it still comes up looking pretty. So there I go. I was trying to use the nasty stuff on the bottom so that I, and now I'm like not going to be able to enjoy the bottom of my basket. <laughs> Okay, at the end of three rows, it's already three and a half inches across or in metric, nine centimeters. So that's a nice sizing. At the end of row 10, I'll have 80 stitches all the way around and I should be somewhere in the ballpark of 30 centimeters or 12 inches. So let's see if that manages to go up. Um, it should, it looks like I'm on track for that. Another sip of my tea. All right, remove crochet hook or crochet stitch marker. On to row four, the new pattern is two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet once into each of the next two. Two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around. Four times four is, uh, I should say eight times four is 24. So at the end of, no, I'm sorry. At the end of row three, I had 24. That's eight times three. At the end of row four, I'll have 32 stitches. So it's sort of a rainy day and my math skills just are out the window as usual. I, I can't do math on live, live <laughs> for some reason. So let's start row four with two single crochet in the first stitch. Let's get that done. There we go. That's my first two stitches. I marked the first one. That is the first stitch of the row. And then a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And that is the first set. So two single crochet in the same stitch followed by a single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So that's four all together in one set. I'm gonna get my yarn going here. Let's pull up a little bit on this. Give myself some slack and start again. Two single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet once into each of the next two. There we go. And that is the second set done. Yeah, this, I'm, I'm stunned. I'm honestly stunned. I didn't think this was going to look this nice. I like the texture that that soft plum is giving everything. Um, I like, I like how that weird multicolored ball of yarn is blending everything together nicely. I'm so surprised. Uh, the stitch markers, the clips that I'm using are little sewing clips. Anybody's interested, um, you can get them from Amazon. I think they're called sewing clips and they are my favorite kind of stitch marker at the moment. They're just easy to clip on and off. It's another set done. Two single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into each of the next two. There we go. Pause, pull out my yarn, keep going. Two into the next stitch. Now I'm thinking an entire basket made out of this combination would look so pretty. I have no idea how much, uh, how uh, how long any of this yarn is going to last. Oops, I dropped a couple of stitches. I don't want that to happen. So uh, I'm just going to tie stuff in as it runs out. I don't really care. That's two into the next stitch. One into each of the next two. Ah, yes, Mr. and Stitches has just added um, our affiliate link to the Amazon uh, link for these stitch markers. So if, um, if any of you want to check them out, or at least just see what they look like, that's the link. Hopefully it still works. Hopefully it still works, yes. Um, everyone wants to know if you uh, made the well deeper, because I can't be heard. Ah, yes, the well is deeper. Mr. and Stitches is even further down the well than normal. If you can't hear him, that's why. <laughs> um, there's been a few questions about... Like it doesn't come out stiff enough. If you want to address 
that. Yeah, yeah. So to reiterate um, about stiffness, if you have trouble with stiffness, and I'm, I'm just, I just want to just also take a moment to show you that, that like if you, if you're going for stiffness, you see how I can sort of squeeze it and it'll stay in a position. That's the kind of stiffness you want. You crochet tightly. You use a smaller hook or you get um, an extra strand of yarn in there. And that is how you tighten things up. If, you, if you're off at a good pace and everything feels nice and tight, great. If you start to get looser as you kind of go up the side of the basket, a couple of things are happening. You're, you're speeding up, you're getting more comfortable. If you can't control the tension with your hands because it's just too much, it's too strenuous, go down a hook size. You can do that halfway through this project. It's perfectly all right. So if you started with a nine millimeter like me and you get up to the, you get up sort of a bit into the basket and it's starting to look a little wobbly and you realize it's because your tension, like it's just not sticking where you want it to anymore. Go down a hook size, go down to an eight millimeter um, or go down a half hook size if you, if you have a half hook size and that will help make your stitches tighter. Or if you really like the hook you're using, you can just work in a whole new strand of yarn. You just knot it like you would with a slip knot on your hook, slip it over your hook while you're making the next set of like, so for example, I'm gonna start, what am I on here? Row five. So quickly, row five is two single crochet into the next stitch and a single crochet into each of the next three. That's two, one, 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 that equals five altogether. Five times eight repeats is 40 stitches. I'll have 40 stitches at the end of row five. Let me just get the first two stitches established. And then I'll put my stitch marker back in right there. And if you were going to add in another strand of yarn, it would look like this. You would just grab your yarn, make a slip knot, leave a nice long tail on it. And when you yarn, so if you go in here and yarn over to pick up your loop while you're in here, slip that one on yarn over the rest to pick up your loop. And now you've got all five uh, on there. Look at that, I'm trying to, except for that one, come back here. There we go. Now you've got all five loops on your hook and you've just added in a whole new strand of yarn. So that's as easy as adding in an extra strand of yarn and that will also increase your tension. If you're having trouble with tension and tight tension is what gives you stiffness. You want stiff sides to your basket, you get that with stiff tension. You get stiff tension by either controlling it tightly with your hands, going down a hook size, or adding in an extra strand of yarn. You've got all three options. You can use one, two, or all of them. Uh, very flexible pattern. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to, to, to just stop and do something completely different halfway through it. It's perfectly all right. It'll work out, I promise. So two into the first stitch, a single crochet into each of the next three. That is the first set done. And now we start all over again. Before I do, I'm gonna make sure I got some slack on my yarn here. Two single crochet into the next stitch. Ooh, I hear Mr. and Stitch is making more tea. It is a tea kind of day, Laurel. So Shell says the two sturdy yarns that she likes for baskets are cotton, yes, and the Fentex slipper yarn, yes. And I bet you that as the cotton you're talking about, by any chance, the Burnett uh, Handicrafter show, because that stuff is, it's a little on the rough grabby side. And I would agree, that would make a good basket. And you're welcome, Karen. I hope that helps. Okay, here we go. So that's two one 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 that's another set done i guess i'll get myself some yarn slack i love how this is coming out already it's got a real kind of um vintage look to it almost which i'm gonna guess is this ever-changing 70s yarn that's kind of giving it sort of a 70s or a late 60s vibe that was two one, one, and one. Sometimes you'll see me do a single crochet in two bits. Like I'll pull through that loop and then I'll pull through that loop as opposed to just pulling back through both of them in one fell swoop. That also gives you more control over your tension. So for example, 
Um, I think I just finished a set there. Let me double check. Two, one, one. Yep. Two single crochet in the next stitch. So I pick up my loop. I've got my two loops on my hook, but I want to keep that tension tight. So I pull back through the first loop and then I pull back through the second loop. And in between, I'm kind of pulling down on those, those strands of yarn just to make sure that like if I can't do it all in one one easy smooth move then I just pull the loop back through first the first loop and then the second loop I'm not rewrapping or anything it just gives you an opportunity to make it a little bit tighter and uh, you'll see me do that quite a bit because it's just an easier way to get that single crochet and you know I'm wrangling four strands of yarn here your base should be uh, twisting on you. It shouldn't necessarily, if it lays perfectly flat, it's too floppy. So if you've got, um, if it's, if it's really, really tight, it should want to kind of bend and warp a little bit on you. That is a good sign because your basket bottom is going to take a lot of weight and the weight will help evenly sort of smooth out the stitches and the whole bottom of the basket will sit flat. But what you want is it to be so tight to start with that it wants to kind of like warp on you. That's actually a good sign in this project. <laughs> All right, starting another set. Two single crochet in the first stitch. So that's just completed two. I'm gonna give myself a little slack and then one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. All right. Thank you for the gift, the membership gift. Who was that? I'm going to back up here and see who I can see it. Nico. Thank you, Nico. <laughs> Don't forget to drink tea. I'm drinking my tea. That's a good sign. I don't want it to get cold. Mm. Thank you for the reminder, Mr. And Stitches. That is so good. All right. Let's see if I can finish this fifth fifth row that means I'm halfway through the bottom of the basket one two and three mm -hmm. pull up on that string start another set that's two single crochet into the first stitch keeping it nice and tight making sure I've got all four strands going around my hook here and then one, one, that's okay. I will pick it up over here and one. Like I said, if you miss a loop, it slips off your hook, just yank tightly and keep going. You don't have to necessarily take it out. It's not gonna unravel on you. Um, but if you don't like that, then you can pull it out and redo it. So there's my two into the same stitch. And I want to go one, one, and one. And I think that leaves me with one set left. I should have four stitches left. One, two, three, four. I do. Two single crochet into the next stitch. This is the last set of increases for row five. There we go. And one single crochet into the remaining three stitches of row five. That completes row five. I have now got 40 stitches all the way around. I am back to my stitch marker, which marks the first stitch of the row. My bottom is wanting to warp on me. That's exactly what I want because if I lay it down and flatten it, it will flatten out, but it's nice and stiff. And my gosh, that is pretty. <laughs> I'm really surprised. Should take some questions and then uh, we can move on more. Great, Mr. and Stitches says we should take some questions. I fully agree. We'll take questions for I don't know 10 15 minutes while I continue to crochet here, and uh, we will call it a day and we will meet you back here, same time, same place tomorrow maybe to continue. We'll, we'll meet, or maybe, yeah, we're going to try and be a little bit earlier. We were a little late today. Um, so just to quickly, I'm starting row six. There's my two single crochet to start off the row. Single crochet two into the first stitch, single crochet one into each of the next four. Four stitches plus two is six. Six times eight is 
48. I want 48 stitches at the end of row six. Let's have some questions, Mr. In Stitches. Well, the first one's from Anna. Okay. Uh, when is Mama's stitches joining the live stream? <laughs> Anna wants to know when Mama and Stitches will be joining the live stream. Mama will be joining the live stream. We're not sure exactly when. Uh, we've been kind of working on that for a while, but um, it is still hopefully going to happen. <laughs> also, uh, we have trouble enough right now with the set getting Mr. and Stitches and I into the same room at the same time. So uh, we, we're going to want to have all of us in the same room when we, we go to do that. So we're, um, we're going to have to play with uh, some table set up, some chair set up, the whole thing. But uh, it is in the works, Anna. Thanks for asking. I'm working on my second set of row six. There we go. Two, one, 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 one. All right. Any more questions? Do you have this pattern in your Etsy shop? Do we have this pattern in our Etsy shop? Yes, we do. It is the big, beautiful basket. The pattern is currently 15% off. It is one of the featured basket patterns up in the, uh, the shop. When you land on the shop homepage, you should see them all up top there. There's the big, beautiful basket, the baby, beautiful basket, the rectangular basket, and the cube basket. We have tutorials for all of them. And all four of those patterns are 15% off uh, all week long in the shop. And the link to our shop will be in the chat down below. It shouldn't be too difficult to find. Um, and a big thank you to everybody who purchases a pattern at our shop. It is a tremendous amount of help for us. And uh, I, I don't think I thank you guys enough for your support. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Another shout out to Nico for another gift earlier. Another thank you to Nico for another gifted membership. Thank you, Nico. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Catherine would like to know how many balls of yarn do you have? <laughs> Catherine wants to know how many balls of yarn I have. Hmm. Um, like in total or just on the desk at the moment? Because <laughs> on the desk. Okay, you know what? Just just in front of me, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16. I have 16 balls of yarn on the table right now. That's just what's on the table. And I don't even know if I could hazard a guess for the rest of the room. I'm just casting my eye around it right now. And um, definitely several hundred. <laughs> definitely several hundred. Uh, if anyone's trying to purchase the clips from our link, you might have to switch your country. Okay, Mr. Institute says if anybody's trying to purchase the sewing clips, uh, which I'm using as the stitch marker here from the, um, the Amazon affiliate link, you might have to switch your country, um, which isn't a big deal. It still kind of will find the nearest thing for you in your country. But it's a it's a link to our affiliate, which is Canadian. Um, so once you get there, you just have to kind of uh, switch to your country and it'll it'll find you the appropriate thing. Kelly asks, what bag would I suggest you make for storing your yarn? Well, um, we have a, an extra large market bag, which is kind of sturdy. I made it out of cotton. I do recommend making your bags out of cotton because it just makes them stronger and more sturdy. And it's pretty big. I actually don't use it as a market bag as much. I, I thought I was going to use it as a market bag, but I actually ended up using it as a project bag. I I take it everywhere um, when I'm hauling a project around with me. That's our our large market bag, our big big stripe market bag. It's the mar we have a tutorial for it. We have a pattern in the shop for it, but it's the market bag that has the the big stripes of color. Mister Insitcher says he's going to post it for you. Um, but that's a great one to store your yarn in because it's sturdy. You can store quite a lot in it, and um, you can hang it on a hanger. So if you want to kind of store stuff vertically in a closet, um, you can hang it on a hanger. Um, I've done that too. It's called the big market tote bag. It's called the big market tote bag. Thank you, Mr. In Stitches. I'm almost finished row six. Gee, I'm actually doing a lot quick. I'm working a lot faster here than I kind of anticipated. So this this makes me happy. 
One, two, three, four, five. I should have five stitches left. I do. This is the last set of increases for row six. Two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, and then a single crochet into each of the remaining four stitches. That finishes row six. That gives me 48 stitches all the way around. I'm going to start row seven. Feeling good? Feeling good? If you're working on this project and you start to feel tension or pain anywhere in your hands, because remember I said you're wrangling a lot of yarn, you're trying to keep stiff tension, you're holding a bigger hook than maybe you're used to, it's a lot for your hands and your wrists and your shoulders and everything to kind of take in. So just put it down, make your notes about what row you're on, what stitch you're on, you know, use your markers for help and take a break, do a little hand yoga, <laughs> a little bit of stretching, um, and come back to it later because you don't want to hurt yourself. That's the last thing you want to do. You don't want your favorite hobby giving you, <laughs> giving you pain. I'm going to start row seven here. So that's two single crochet into the first stitch of the set. Mark that first stitch. And the increase pattern for row seven is two single crochet into the first stitch and a single crochet into each of the next five stitches, five plus two equals seven, seven times eight repeats is 56. So I will have- Thank you, Joanna, big thank you for purchasing the pattern. We really appreciate oh, it. Oh, big thank you to Joanna for purchasing the pattern. Thank you, Joanna. I really appreciate that. We both do. And I hope you appreciate the, uh, the crazy basket fun. <laughs> this is just such a great way to use up your scraps. And then, you know, look at, look at, look at, Look at how ugly, <laughs> look at how ugly these balls of yarn are. Seriously, I can't believe how good they all look together. Just to recap, these are the four balls of yarn that I'm using. Uh, a pale, not so nice straw yellow, a satiny dark beige that I'm sick of looking at, this thing that looks like it fell out of the 1970s, and this soft kind of weird plummy color. And that is what they look like mixed together and i just love this it looks like autumn i think it is so pretty um and it's very very tight it's going to be a nice sturdy basket so i am just delighted with that it is such a great way to use up your scraps so thank you thank you thank you everybody who's picked up a purchase picked up a pattern and um like i said we've got the tutorial to go along with it so if you need you know a quick refresher you want to work on it tonight uh, you know, as opposed to waiting until we get back into this again tomorrow, then it's always right there for you. We'll make sure it's linked below as well. Dawn says, could I use a, a spare piece of yarn as a stitch marker in the basket? I have stitch markers, but I don't know how sturdy they are. Great question. Absolutely, you can. You can use anything as a stitch marker so long as you recognize it as a stitch marker. <laughs> and let me explain. If you're using a piece of yarn and you're just kind of pulling it through and then you're working away and it's a real crazy scrap basket, if you don't remind yourself that a scrap of yarn is actually a stitch marker, you might pull it out not kind of thinking about what you're doing. If you come back to the project a little later, like you've put it down, you've gone away. You might pull it out not knowing what it is or forgetting. So make a note that you're using a particular scrap of yarn as a stitch marker. You can also use bobby pins. You can use hair barrettes. You can use um, safety pins, sewing clips. Um, you can even use, uh, if you've got stitch markers or uh, stitch holders, if you're um, into knitting, you can use those. Sometimes I just use my, my uh, needle. Mr. and Stitches is ringing the bell. I don't know if you can hear that. Nico! Nico has gifted another membership. Thank you, Nico. And it looks like Bobby has won it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I would like to know if they can hear the bell. Yes, can everybody hear the bell? Could anybody or could anybody hear the bell? I suppose that would be the it's coming from the well. It's coming a bell sounds bell the well. in the well. A bell from the well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Still going here. Working my way around row seven. <laughs> the bell was very quiet. It was quiet. Yeah, we're going to have to get Mr. and Stitches it back was a in this very room. Tiny bell, <laughs> 
<laughs> it was a tiny bell. Well, technically, it is a tiny bell. It is a tiny bell. Oh, Katie didn't hear the bell. Cinnamon said no. Well, this is Jada heard it. So, so Cinnamon and Katie did not hear the bell. I have an idea. Mr. Stitches has an idea. Oh, dear, no. I don't know what that's going to mean. I don't hear anything. What do you? Oh, do I? Oh, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I like it. One, two. Catherine says I need a foghorn, and Three. I agree. Catherine, he does not need a foghorn. That is the last, last thing. Because you know he would chase me around the house with it at all times of the day and night, blaring it in my ear. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know where you would buy a foghorn, sweetie. Um, and I'm not going to put the research in to find you one. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You're going to hear me counting sometimes. This is how I often keep track of where I am, especially if I'm not using um, stitch markers. Because on row seven, there are seven stitches in a set. And on row eight, there are eight stitches in a set. And on row nine, there are nine stitches in a set. This is how I keep track of where I am. So I know the first stitch in the set gets two single crochet. Let me just make sure I haven't missed any here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So I work two single crochet into the next stitch and I count one, two, and then three, four, five, six, and seven. And it looks like the bottom end of my plum yarn keeps trying to work its way into my. There we go. Now I feel like I may have missed a stitch somewhere. If you do, don't worry about it. Just make sure when you get to the end of the row, you count them up and you've got the right number. So at the end of row seven, I should have 56 stitches. And I'm going to make sure that I do. But I'm just going to see one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. I think I messed up on my first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I messed up on my very first set, which is fine. I'm not going to take it back out. I'm just going to make sure that I have 56 stitches all the way around. It will not mess anything up. Everyone's letting me know where I get a foghorn. Oh, everybody's doing the research, eh? So you're all going to find Mr. and Stitches a foghorn, and I'm going to go deaf. <laughs> I draw the line at it's shooting pool noodles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that should leave me with one set left. So let me just double check here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. And I want to make sure I have 56 when I'm done. So 48. Here we go. 49. 50. There's that thing trying to work its way in again. If anyone's uh, tried to purchase the pattern and isn't sure how it works or if they uh, uh, received it, we'll, we'll work with them after the show. Yes, yes. If you've picked up the pattern and you can't quite figure out how to download it, don't worry. We will uh, just leave us a quick message and we will come help you out after the show in the shop. We can yeah, do that. Yeah, in the Etsy shop. We can do that. Uh, yeah, leave a message in the Etsy shop and we can help you out there. Um, so what did I do? That was... 48, so 49, 50, 
51, 52. Charlie says Canadian Tire, of course. Sorry, Jada. 53 Canadian Tire. Everyone, oh. <laughs> everyone wants me to have a five more, but they feel sorry for you. Oh, it did work out. 56. I'm going to double check that. But so you can get a foghorn at Canadian Tire. Are you serious? And why did you tell him that? <laughs> All right. I got to double check. I should have 56 stitches at the end of this row. It doesn't matter where my increases went so long as I have 56 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. Perfect. Worked out. End of row seven. I have 56 stitches. It is still nice and ripply, which means it's very, very stiff. more cowbell charlie i know what you're referencing and that is one of my favorite skits of all time <laughs> oh my gosh all right are there any other questions from anybody regarding today's project or just keeping tension or choosing hooks in general i think i'm going to get my row eight started Oh, we haven't had a poll. Catherine, you're so right. Well, we have to have a poll before we go. We will wrap it up and we will continue yeah, that sounds fantastic. We will do a poll. I will finish this row. We will wrap it up and we will catch you all back here midday tomorrow, uh, basically around the same time. Uh, but of course, we will start the stream pre-show where you can all pop into the chat. You'll see it. It'll pop up in your feed. Um, so don't worry too much. Right, well, who asked so Catherine, Catherine asked... Catherine, since you asked about the poll, what would you like us to poll everybody on? I think that's a great, that's a great idea. We haven't had a poll yet. My gosh, that was quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And while we're waiting on the uh, the idea from Catherine for the poll, I'm in row eight, which means that the Increases start with two single crochet in the first stitch and a single crochet into each of the next six stitches. Six plus two is eight. Eight times eight repeats is 64. I will have 64 stitches at the end of row eight. Question from Joanna Trapp. Yep. What's the best way to get rid of pain in the fingers? Joanna's Crafts says, what's the best way to get rid of pain in the fingers? Well, I would recommend stop whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> First of all, um, gentle stretching, putting them in a warm bath, like a warm water bath, or if you've got it, a warm wax bath. Uh, warm wax is absolutely amazing on the hands. Now, not everybody has a wax machine. I do not, but I do know a couple of people who do have them and they highly recommend them. But a warm bath, a uh, warm water bath for my hands has worked nicely for me too. Um, so a little bit of a, a massage, uh, a little bit of stretching, warm water, maybe take a moment to like rub some nice feeling lotion into your hands. Um, if you've got any uh, pain relieving lotion, a little bit of that can help, but definitely make sure you take a break and do not return to the activity you were up to uh, until, you know, that pain has, has subsided for a while, like not the second it stops, but you know, at least for a while, because you don't, whenever we feel pain, it's definitely a sign that we're, we're, adding undue strain to a part of our body. So uh, we don't want to do that. And I am working away on row eight. I got much further ahead in the hour than I thought I would uh, because I knew we were going to talk about yarn and we were going to talk about hooks. But we're going to do this again tomorrow. Um, and have we got a poll yet, Mr. Institutes? It's coming. Oh, OK. I don't even know what it is. I can't see it. You know that. That's it. The foghorn's coming. As a fog, you can keep that foghorn. <laughs> okay, the poll is up. One, two, three, and four, five, is... six. <clears throat> Seven, eight. Blanket, basket, 
Ooh. Ooh, I want to crochet baskets, blankets, shawls, or other stuff. And can I just add, is that contingent on using up the scraps in your pile or just in general? Is that kind of a... So Catherine's, Catherine wants to know what you would rather or the other stuff. I guess that's option D, the other stuff. I like that. I'm definitely eager to get a new big beautiful basket built for the the uh the craft room and now that i'm seeing how this oh yeah if you choose all of the above you can add it to the chat um or mr and sister says just type all of the above in the chat <laughs> we don't have a foghorn emoji i guess that's what's coming next is it <laughs> Um, now that I see how nice these yarns are playing together, I am excited about the basket being kind of getting itself made. And I'm hoping that some of this some of this color combination continues part way up the basket because I actually really like it. Another one done. <laughs> Wendy said I panicked because it said your order was coming from Canada, but then I remembered it comes straight here. Yes, you are purchasing from, from Canada, but it's an instant digital download. Yes, Mr. Institute just says the uh, if you purchase a pattern from our shop, and thank you if you do, it will say your order is coming from Canada, which it technically is, but it's an it's an instant download. <laughs> And there's several ways you can download your pattern. So if you ever run into any trouble with that, just message us at the shop um, and we can help you with that because it's a very common issue. So don't feel bad if you, you feel like you can't figure out how to download it or if it's glitching out or if there's something wrong. It's not you. <laughs> Etsy has made things a little, a little cumbersome. Um, it is a relatively easy process, but it isn't necessarily all that obvious. So if you do have problems, for heaven's sakes, let us know. We can help you out. And I am almost finished row eight. I am so delighted. I didn't realize this was going to, I didn't think I was going to get this far. So that gives me hope for getting this basket done before Friday. All right. One more vote and I'll, we'll wrap it up. Okay. Mr. Institute says one more vote. So one more second to get your votes in. And then he's going to, he's going to finish the uh, poll. For the record, there is a hand. Three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight. Mr. Insitches says there are some people saying all of the above. Why well, want to crochet? 47% of you say blankets. 21% say other stuff. 17% say shawls. And 12% say baskets. So I guess... Um, I'm in the minority here making a big, beautiful basket. I kind of like that. One, two. I am one set away from being finished, row eight. That's three. And I will make a note that I left off on row eight. Number seven. And number eight. And that is row eight in the bag. That is 64 stitches, nice and stiff. I can press it flat if I really work at it. That is a very nice basket base. At the end of row eight, let's see where we're at. Oh, 21 centimeters, almost eight and a half inches across. I am definitely on track to be a 12 inch diameter basket bottom, which means it'll get a little bit wider as I work up the top. So this is great. Everyone, thank you for joining us on a Monday afternoon to get this big, beautiful blanket, or I should say big, beautiful basket started. I really do keep confusing baskets and blankets today. I guess I want to make a blanket too. I just finished making a blanket. I just don't need to make any more blankets. Um, at the beginning of the video, we talked briefly about the kinds of yarns that make the best baskets, how to pick your hook, 
And uh, just jumping in, how to adjust tension as you go. This is a very forgiving pattern. So don't be afraid to work in an extra string, an extra, like an extra ball of yarn, an extra strand, uh, mix crazy colors together, variegated, self-striping, solids, whatever you want. This is looking gorgeous in my personal opinion. And it's from four very humble, blah looking balls of yarn. Also, in my opinion, um, we're nowhere near done. So we will see you back here tomorrow afternoon around the same time. But like we said, when we get the stream up and running, you'll get a little notification and you can always pop over, click the notify me button and it'll tell you when we, we get going here. So uh, even if we end up with a little odd delay like we did today. Yes, anybody who's joined us late. Hi, welcome. You didn't miss too much. Just got the bottom of the blast, the basket going. We will link the original tutorial down below and uh, we will continue right here from where we left off tomorrow. So have a wonderful evening, everybody. And we will see you back here tomorrow afternoon to continue working on the big, beautiful basket. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> <I'm done. laughs> Ha <laughs> ha